So you're ready to take your video editing to the next level. You've worked with SDR files, you're pretty fine with that, but now you want to do something a little bit more. You're not quite ready for RAW yet, but you want to tweak your N-Log files to get them to look just that little bit nicer. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I tweak my files to get that nice, wonderful image that you see in some of my videos. Let me say this first. I am not an expert on DaVinci Resolve. I like things simple. DaVinci Resolve is for colorists. If you want to go to that next level, you can develop node trees and you can get them all over the place, manage your different colors individually and so on. This is not what this video is about. This is how to simply convert your log file into something workable. And we're not going to go to, to too many colors, but I'm going to give you the basics to get you started. So let's get on the computer and we'll start with today's lesson. In order to get started, you're going to need the Resolve program. Now you can edit with other programs, but Nikon has said that DaVinci Resolve is the one that works with their software and works best. So we're going to utilize Resolve. If you don't have already a Resolve, you can get a free copy. You go to Products, DaVinci Resolve and Fusion Software. And you see down here, it has DaVinci Resolve. There's a free version and there's a studio version. So we'll just look on the free version. I already have the software, but I was wanna walk you through to what it's gonna look like. It's gonna give you some information about the products and what it is, and you can get started with the download. So click on free download and select your operating system. In my case, it's Mac OS. And just fill out the information, register and download. And then that's it. Now that you've had your software downloaded, typically you find it in your launchpad section. And what I normally do is I'll move it from there or rather copy it from there. I control click or option click and then bring it to my launch pad. So on my launch pad, I can click on it and it launches this window. If you're interested in learning how to set it up to work an external drive, I can do a separate video on that one. But as you notice right now, my files are on an external drive and I have to kind of simplify it for what I'm working on. I'm going to bring it down to this section so I can work from, from here. One of the most important things to do is when you decide to start your project, first give it a name. And since we're working on this one, oops, should know that. Since we're working on this, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a name that's something that's easy to remember. So we can right click on it and then select Save As and we'll call it Working with NLog. So we always want to make sure we have our project set in set ahead of time, or you can do it after you've loaded the files in, but it depends on who you want to do it. If you practice it from the beginning and you get things set up, it helps. If you know what your file settings are, whether they're 24, 25, 30p, 60p, you want to set it up from the beginning and get everything looking good. So we'll come in here and we'll go to project settings. For my project, I'm utilizing a 4K timeline and the timeline is the area that you work on. We'll get into that as soon as we get uh, inside the program itself. My files are actually 23.97. Sometimes I work on the FX30 and I use a 24. So I just leave it at 24. And whenever I import the file, it's gonna ask me if I wanna do a change and I can do that at that time. But what we're going to do right now is come into the color management section. We're going to set this from the beginning. You have DaVinci YRGB. This is how mine looks when I first launch it. So what I'm going to do is come in here and select DaVinci YRGB color managed and pretty much leave everything just the way it is. We want automatic color management. So DaVinci Resolve figures out what the files need and take care of that. And then we'll save and we'll open up the folder. So under the media pool, I want to go to the folder where my files are located. 
and then I'm going to select open. This is what I was talking about before. The project frame rate is 23.97. This is set for 24. So I can just change. If you forget this to do it, it the files will look a little quirky when you're edit, editing and you finish them up. So make sure they match when you get them inside here. So we'll click on change. Down the bottom here, there's a cut page. Now, I don't want to go to extensive in this because uh, this is not a full fledged DaVinci Resolve how to use it uh, session. But as a beginner, there's the media page, the cut page, the media page can like we bring everything in so you can look at things where like a kind of file and you can scroll up through things that are in here. Then there's a cut page where I just brought the files in and I can click on something, bring it in here. And again, I can do my cut here. Let's say I want to start recording. Probably should kill the sound. So let's say I wanted something here that I have some space that I want to start working from. And I'll hit the I for the endpoint of where I want the video to start. And then hit O as an out point. And that's on your keyboard. To keep it simple, there is an I for in, O for out. Okay. So normally I do this in my edit page. And depending on what I'm going to be working on, I will select a file that I want to use and I'll drag it down the bottom. So let me get these things set up for you so you don't have to we don't have to spend a lot of time going through right here. I'll just get all set up and then we'll come back. Now normally when you record log file, it'll look a bit flat. When you do the playback, the color's a bit muted. It's not the same as if you recorded it in SDR mode where all the colors are basically inside the file. This one is going to give you the option to do your own edits and colorize the way you want. If you just want to do this a simple thing, you can drop the LUT on it and we can move on without doing anything else. So I'm going to show you two ways how to make this edit and let's see how they look. Now, just for argument's sake, we'll use another one here. This one has been recorded in UHD. Basically, there is um, no changes here. It's SDR mode. I put it here, 8, 8K30. It's an 8K file. Won't worry about the size of the file. That's really not a big thing for this video. It's just what you're looking at. You can let the camera do it. Everything gets taken care of, or you can do things on your own. I've loaded in two clips. And as you look at the clips, both of them look like they're already taken care of. How did that happen? Well, that was because when I did the setup, I select DaVinci YGB Color Manage, Automatic Color Management. DaVinci took care of everything. There's no need to do anything after that. The files are in there. Once you finish rendering the file, it will come out exactly as it's supposed to look, already colored, with the log files edited. Now, let's say you don't like exactly how it looks and you want to do some changes. This is where now we're going to the color page and we can make some additional changes to it. Here's your working section for making modifications to your file. When you first load it in, you'll have one node. If you've watched videos on Resolve, you hear people talk about node trees. You can add them by adding a serial node and keep adding more for different colors and um, lots, color space transform and so on. So you can do all that and add more, it's totally up to you. I like to keep it simple as it is right now. Let's say we go on this one file and we will make some changes. Some of the sections look dark, but it's not a big thing. You can always bring up um, so we go to the game, we can bring up the gain a bit. And let me turn on the waveform so you can see what's going on here. You can see, as soon as we apply the LUT file, it's like all over the place. It's, you know, all the information is in there, but it's like it's, you know, everywhere. It's topped out at the level here. So normally what I do for my files, the first thing I want to do, and let's reset everything, is Bring down the contrast because I find an icon things to be a little bit more contrasted than I would like. Okay. And after I've done that, now we can look at making some additional changes. You want to bring up some areas that are dark or you want to make them a little bit darker. Then you have your shadow 
or it's called a lift wheel. It allows you to make things brighter, make things darker. Your gamma does something similar, but on a slightly less level. And generally speaking, once we're doing edits, we usually bring the gamma down a bit and it kind of make the whole image a bit smoother. We can bring down the shadow some more. We don't want to go too much. And if you want to make it brighter, you can bring up the entire image here. The key thing to remember is you want to get things exposed correctly from the beginning, and that will help a lot. This situation, there's a lot of different lighting that's going on. So you may have to make some slight adjustments to it. But for the most part, you probably don't need to be, to be too much. If you want it to be a little bit more contrast, you can add back some contrast in. If you don't want to do that, then you can change it. But this, for the most part, takes care of everything. Now, the next thing we can do is if you use Resolve in a standard state with DaVinci Resolve YRGB, once we save this, you'll notice the file goes back to being that gray washed out color. Now, let's all the reset in here so we don't have any changes. And in the waveform, you can see how everything looks. It's missing the dark information because of how it got recorded, everything's a bit pushed up. So in order to add a LUT file, you have to add the LUT files into the system. There are some videos online in order to do that. I don't want to go through that in this video because it may be a bit convoluted. You may have a PC and this is a Mac, but there's, direct there's directions online that will show you how to do that. So my end log files are here. Okay, as I move over one, you can see how things look differently. Okay, I have Z9, Z7, and so on. So what I'm gonna do is select the second one. You always want your LUT file to be closer to the end or the, the last one in your uh, node tree. And again, this is just the basic simple stuff. There are people out there who are experts who do a way more than I do, but I like to keep things simple. And this is, I'm just saying, you will get started with editing and log, this is one way you can go with it. So once this is selected, you can drag the file, release it here, and it's the same as if you drag, drag the file and you put it over here, but it's like right in the center, so just it's done. And let's turn off the lock so we can get a bigger view. This is with just adding the LUT file to it. <clears throat> this is with just adding the LUT file. Clearly you can see that things are just moving along very well. It looks almost the same as the other one with probably a little bit more contrast, but for the most part, everything still looks good. So that's two separate ways you have that's allowing you to either bring the files in, apply the LUT, and then do some changes just like before. And again, now if you are not happy with the LUT, how it looks and you wanna make some changes, Usually you don't change it on this file. You go back to the first one and then you can make it change what you want to make it a little bit brighter, darker, or you want to change the gamma, make it a bit smoother looking. And of course, because now we're like in the blacks going on there, let's do a little bit of lifting things up. Actually, I think we should use this one and bring it and then we'll bring this one down, not too much. So we're not crushing the colors. Actually, let's bring it up against zero. That should be fine right there. And we haven't changed the contrast any, but if you think it's look more contrasted in your eyes and you want to change that, this is where you can bring down the contrast slider. And as you can see, it's making the black look a bit more natural as opposed to being blown out. Well, I should say being blown, it's like really, really dark. Because I mean, and the file here was down the bottom, which is kind of blown out. The, the highlights, the colors up here are on the blown out side. So you can always come into the highlight section and you can bring that down. Um, so there are a few things you can do. I'm not an expert and I want to go through a full fledged messing around with this stuff because this is just to keep it basic. And of course, once you get a better understanding, you can always mess around with things some more and make it the way you like. Once you make a change in a section, if you want to bring it back to zero, just double click and it'll bring the file back to, well, it'll bring the, the setting back to the normal set state. So I provide you with two methods in which to edit the files. 
If you go with the standard way of bringing everything into the refrigerator off without doing any additional setup, then you can put the LUT files on it and you can tweak it, or you can set up the project from the beginning to have the files converted with the refrigerator off colors, and then you can take it from there with your edits. Both ways are pretty simple. One just requires a little bit of setup from the beginning. The other one, you just bring the files in and tweak it. So hopefully you find that information useful. If you have any questions or comments, if I misspoke on something and there's something you'd like to add to the video, put it in the comment section as well. I want to thank everyone for watching the video. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, please remember to get subscribed and give the video a thumbs up on your way out. Thank you guys. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.